and Isaiah the prophet, look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to Branch Together. My name is Jared, and today we have a good, hope-filled message from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Before we dive in, let's take a moment and pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of this day. I pray that you would give us patience and forbearance, the ability to persevere and to trust in you, to remember your spirit is at work in us, that you would continue to give us hope. Lord, we again ask for our daily bread. Help us seek your kingdom. Help us trust you in this hour and in this day. We pray for all of those who are hurting, who are struggling, who are losing jobs, who are afflicted with illness, and those who are caring for those folks as well. We pray for all the first responders and those who are out trying to help day in, day out. We think of doctors, nurses, and all the support staff at hospitals. Um, everyone, everyone who's out there trying to help. Um, we pray that you would bless them and care for them. In your name we pray. Amen. John chapter 20, verses 1 to 14. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. One at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Imagine Mary's situation. Imagine her pain. We all can. All of us who have lost a loved one and sat through the memorial service and stood by the grave. We go back to the gravestone at a later date, perhaps to bring some flowers a few days or even years later and, and feel that sadness wash back over us. We feel that sadness and that lack of hope that Mary felt that day. But then something happens. A hope beyond hope becomes a reality. Jesus is alive and he is present with Mary, but Mary can't experience the presence of Jesus. How could she ever know it was Jesus? Death was her reality. But something bigger than death is revealed to Mary that morning. Resurrection is bigger than her reality. For all of us looking for hope, resurrection is the greater reality, greater even than death. It is difficult to see that because we see death as our reality. How can we see a hope beyond death how can we see that there is one who has conquered death and can even embrace us and bring us through death to life? Listen to the next few verses. Verse 15, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Imagine one you love who has passed away. What would you give if one day you were walking in your favorite park and you heard them call you by name again? Jesus 
the crucified Jesus, the dead and gone Jesus calls Mary by name once again, and she is able to see. Listen to these words from the prophet Isaiah. Hear what God the Father says to his beloved children, Israel. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And though the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have called you by name. You are mine. Mary heard her friend, her teacher, her Lord, her Savior, call her by name. And she heard something even more. She hears her creator call her by name. The creator and the redeemer call her by name. Imagine hearing the voice of a parent or loved one long gone call us by name one more time. It's like that, but even bigger. One day we will hear Jesus and the Father and the Spirit call us by name. In the love and resurrection of Christ, there is a bigger hope than we can imagine. The Lord calls us by name and we are his. He created us. When we pass through the waters, he is with us. The river will not overwhelm. He is with us through the fire and through the flames. They shall not burn and consume us. When Jesus calls her, Mary clings to him. Cling to Jesus today. He gives more hope and more life than we could ever ask or imagine. Cling to the love of Jesus. Hear him call you by name. Believe that he is the resurrection and the life. Believe that whatever you're going through today, he is our resurrection and our life. God bless you all. I'll close with this last good word. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. God bless you all, and we'll see you next time on Branch Together.